got a big Viper in here. That's what it is. Big old Viper toy hauler. XLR. We're going to go in and show you what we got. Coming through, coming through, coming through. A bunch of what they call frass right there. It's just kind of odd why it's sitting there. So we were trying to see what's going on. We'll move this. Did you say there was a hole in the floor? Back there. In the back. Yeah. Not a hole hole, but it's about I mean, it's soft, a real big soft. Yeah. Hole. It's gonna be a hole. Here we can. And down here on the floor, you can see all that. A lot more than this whole wall. That's super soft. It shouldn't be like that. I pressed that earlier. Here it is out there. Got a, an ant right there. It's a carpenter ant. Let me get my flashlight. That's a carpenter ant. It must be a union one. That's a lazy carpenter ant. He doesn't even have his tool belt on or nothing. He should be getting to work. There's another one right here. Crawling around the wall. So we got some issues here that now we have to explore and find out what we're going to do with all this. Where's the hole in the floor? This is the way they usually do your slide out roofs. So they're underneath here is a piece of metal. So they bring the roofing over, they fold it back, put that piece of metal down, then they flip this back up, bring it around to go on this fascia trim right here. And then what happens though, look in there, so if water travels from in there, you know, when you have the slide out, it travels, it gets it rolls in here, then it can roll in there, and then you can actually see wood. You can get the camera in there, but you can see wood right in here. So we're going to have to fix that as well. This doesn't look like a cheap model either. It doesn't. Had some D lamb on the side. Where is it? Where is it? Oh wow! Whoa! Looks like it's been wet. Like yeah. It's been wet all the way across there. Set the carpet's colored. Yeah. Okay, well that's who we are. There's a couple of problems we've seen. We'll have to figure it out. For what we're going to do with it. There you go, you got a light in there? Yeah. Alright, we'll be back. Alright. Got a missing handle there. This is uh, obviously the bathroom. Yeah, that's a cheap coach. No, it's a high-end coach. I mean, it's supposed to be. Here's that same style on the on here, the way they do these. See the wood in there? You don't think water gonna get in that? Come on, look at this. Cheap silicone. Let's peel that off. <laughs> get them built, get them out, get them sold. Crank up antenna will go. And uh, I'm really concerned about what's going on with those ants, how much damage they cause on that side over there on the side of that bed. Looks like it's all dry. Ah, this is the outside of this Viper. Right here, the front. This is the front of the coach. This is where that bed is. This is where all the ants were, right on this wall, right there below the window and everything. So, here's a couple of screws we just took out. You can see that they look at rusty right there. See how rusty they are? So what could have happened, I mean you can see the probability of water getting in there and there, but water can travel right down here. And if that isn't sealed, which I'm suspecting it, it wasn't, because this is all, let's see if you can hear the difference. Yeah, it's not solid, it's soft. 
It feels soft. So let's take this off. Look at there. See, it was never sealed in there. And this is why we don't use that other, we use the snap over type of trim because the water will get down on that track and all it takes is little weep holes. You see all this dirt? Oh, wow. That wasn't cool at all. That is still wet in there or something. Something just. That little bit flickered some junk at me. Oh, that's silicone right there. Ooh. Let's see what we got. This doesn't turn into one of those big jumbo videos. <laughs> ha! Hey, you got an aluminum frame in there. But obviously, this is all. We're going to open this up more. I'll show you more. But I jumped up here on the roof so I can uh, give you an idea of what's going on with this. So then the other guys get busy. You can see. This is a, a shoulder piece comes around. That's, uh, that's the piece right there. You can see how flexible it is. Probably not enough fasteners in there. Typical Dicor roof. I don't see any major breaching on here. You see all this. All this gets dried. You want you to keep putting more on, more on. Yeah. Welcome to all the Dicor. Stay in your wallet. That's what it is. Stay in your wallet, die core. That's about it. I don't see anything major. It's your typical roof, so I like to show some stuff on here. You know, so uh, maybe I give you a pointer or two. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. This thing is wet up inside here. You can see all the moisture right there. Whoa! <laughs> That's what happened to me earlier. You see all the moisture right up in here. That is still wet. Did did wet right there? All wet up inside there. Now oh, we know it's wet up inside here. We're gonna try and loosen window, that up. That window too. Oh, you're on that window too. Here you can see all this water coming out. It's all soaked up inside there. All these little, these are called galleys. This is where the ants go in. These little galleys. They go in and they make their their nest down in there. Get one here, 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 here. Now what we're trying to do, there they come. There's one there. Oh, there's one that's gone that way. Where are you going? There's another. Yeah, it's all in there. That's where they are. Yeah, coming out now. That's where they are. <laughs> we done disturbed them. Okay, we found them. We gotta go get some ant killer. All right, so we got all the roofing off. Most of the deck looks great. What we did find, because there was little plastic corners here, what we did find is that the little plastic corner. She has started to weep some water in here, so we got this uh, blower on here, right? You can see it blowing some air, and we're going to dry that out. It's not rotted, it's just a little damp, so we're going to catch that quick. So that's a plus. And then uh, they pinned all this down. We're going to, that's why we got our staple guns here. We're going to restable this all down, but we took the shoulder off. And you would think about, well, why do we need to take the shoulder off? We really don't have to take the shoulder off because it's, this, this could be an easy, uh, job where we could just through you know staple it down put our protective strips on there you see on here we're going to use a protective strip because this is a little uneven but anyhow we could just throw the roofing on roll it over but here's here's my thought and this is because uh, i've done so many of these i'm over here we took the shoulder off because i was showing that this is just pinned it's not glued it's just pinned in there there's no glue in there what at all in here and i could open this up even a little bit more for you if I can get around this way. But there's no glue in there. See, it's all dry. There's no glue. Anyhow, they just use little little pins, pin nails, you know, about an inch and a quarter, and they're very small. So we're gonna restaple all this. But I was that's a point I was trying to make when I was showing my guy how this was going together. Then we come across this. And 
let's see if I can get this to come out for you. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try and hold that camera steady. There it is. See that burr in the wire? You can just see it right in there. That little burr. See if I zoom up a little bit if that would help. And the reason for it is look how sharp all that is in there. Look at that burr right inside there. There's a burr right in the front right there. You can see. That's rubbing on this. So now we're going to fix this. We're going to put some protective inserts in there. This is a high dollar coach. It's just, you know, they come in here and I go, man, these things are, man, but this is a triaxle. I bet this thing's probably $160,000 or so. Um, but anyhow, whatever, even if it's 100 grand, that's still a lot of money. But the point is, this is how they do you. Right here. Drill a hole, throw a wire. So now as the coach is going down the road and this thing's kind of going back and forth, may even get pinched or whatever, it's going to compromise that wire. It's going to short out and then nothing works. And the customer's going to say, hey, I just have my roof done and now my fan doesn't work. And they're like, well, I mean, and it's not our fault. It's because of this right here. So we're going to take all these shoulders out, make sure we uncover all these wires, and then we're going to make sure we, they're all protected, and then we're going to put a protective plate over them to make sure nobody else, well, we shouldn't be up here anyways with any fasteners whatsoever, so that, that aluminum plate should cover it because we're going to have it fastened down here but we're going to make sure that nobody even puts a screw here, so we'll make a notation in a wire right here. Because I don't want a screw to hit that, right? And so we're going to check them all. We'll mark everything, so this way we go right along. We know what we're doing. We don't have any hiccups and burps. But overall, the deck itself looks pretty good. We haven't seen any major issues on the roof line, only on the front there, where we were showing you down on that end, where all those uh, ants were. And then uh, in this section here, there is some D-lamb on here, but we're not going to be able to fix that. It's that bad where he's going to have to bring it to a body shop. I think it's right by that window. There's some D-lamb on there. And uh, we tried to press it before we put the scaffold last night. We tried to do that. And it doesn't even want to budge. So if it doesn't want to budge, there's no sense in doing it. It's going to have to get a relief cut fixed and bonded back in and then uh, repainted. There's nothing we can do with it. So... But, uh, alright, so that's where we're at. We'll show you a couple more if we come so across So we took them. all the shoulder off looking for those wires. There's nothing more down that way. Then we put in here where it's a redhead insert. You can see it right there. I'll show you what they are on the other side. We're going to put that shoulder back on. We're going to staple this back down. So we just, there it is. Isn't that pretty? That's all it is. It's actually an electrical code. This is what they look like. Right there. You get them in different sizes. They're pennies. That's how cheap these manufacturers are. They will not put another red cent in there. Red cent. Get it? Because that's all that is. Red cent. Boom, boom. Anyhow, they won't put them in. So, that's a shame. And all it does is to protect a wire. So they'd rather see this thing get compromised than to put another couple of pennies in there. That's. So we checked all the way down here. That's why the whole shoulder's off of there. Then we uh, shine a flashlight down inside there. We couldn't see anything, so we're all good with all that. We'll get our strips going on, get these shoulders put back in place, and we're going to try and get some uh, roofing on here. we got to get some protection in our little holes there so we don't fall through. Blah, blah, blah. All right, what we got? I don't know if I can show that. I'm trying to see if I can... There you go. You can see a little bit of that white under there. We uh, glued the shoulder down and stapled it. That's what we did. And then uh, we're restapling the whole deck. The whole deck's getting all restapled. That's what we're doing over here now. We're going to go over the whole entire deck. Then we got our protector strips to go on. Go on. So I've noticed something. We're going to take a little mallet. We're going to peen that down because it's just not quite that smooth, right? That's what we're doing over here now. Now we'll get our strips on. Got some glue on here. You can see all the protective strips we got. So we've got all those down. And then uh, that's what we're doing now is just rolling out some glue. Get it all adhered. Oh, we already got one side rolled out. And now we got the big roller on here now. And then we'll, we'll flip this other side, do the same thing. Glue it, roll it. Uh, you get the adhesive on there and then uh, roll it down there. Let's go in this Viking here and take a look at this floor. 
I already showed you that wall in the front bunk. We come out here and we had that rot. We had to take all this up. And this is where it was. And these are some mounts right there, those mounts. They had those, you know, tie downs. They just had those screwed in with these long screws. Here they go. Here they are. Here are the mounts. Right here. These are the mounts that they had. They went through the floor with these big screws. Not those ones. These ones. It just went right through there. That's it. That was all that was holding it. So all the water from underneath, when the wheel was spinning, was throwing water up inside there. And because those mounts, you know, when you're trying to mount this down there, it was kind of wiggling all this. After a while, they get loose. Because there's not a lot of holding power. They uh, cause all that rot. That's where this one is right here. That's all rotted too, these mounts. But they, uh, and then this one back here in this corner is all rotted down in that end. So we're going to dig all dig it all out. And then we're going to splice in a piece. And we got to add some more framing to it and everything. Uh, it's going to be too much to try to redo the whole thing with a new floor. So here's that back end. And this is where the, the rod is on the inside. And they had those mounts. I don't know if I can show you that. I'm going to try. If I can get my uh, flashlight out. See if it'll shine in there. But there's where the mounts were. Right up in there. Right here. And all that water just kept spinning off of this tire. So this tire, when it was spinning, the only thing I can figure is that when this tire was spinning, the front one, and the water was coming up, this one was coming down, pushing that same water down, so it didn't have as much spitting up. And the same with this one here. This one was coming down, but there's nothing in the back. So it was just really just throwing it up underneath that plate. And it was never sealed. So now, like I said, we got a tear up floor assembly. Well, there's our new piece going in. Then we got another skin going over it. We've got some steel up underneath here. It goes up under that way. And uh, we're going to laminate this all together. This steel will bring it together. And then what we're going to do, we've got a joint right there. And we are going to epoxy that with some high dollar marine grade epoxy. So it'll basically bring all this one piece is what we're going to do. That's where we're at. Get the same over here. All right, so we got it all together. And these are all these joints are all epoxy right here. And then there's steel plate in there too. And then obviously you see they're all screwed down. And now we got a piece of aluminum we're going to put on here, and that'll bridge it. And again, that'll get all fastened and adhered in there too. So that's where we are so far. Got the new holes there for our tie downs. So we're moving along. And we got this other side we're working with too. Same thing over here. But we'll get that one. We are done with our Viper. Here's our logo. RVRoofInstall.com And this is the month, the year we installed it. So when it comes back, we keep looking at it, making sure everything is right. Everything is good. We have, we have an idea of how old the roof is. Also, if the, uh, the owner, if he decides to sell this coach, the last thing I want is for someone to come in and start talking down, saying, oh, i got to put a roof on these things. These things leak like a sieve. I know it. He go, hey, this thing was just put on November 19th. So, so we've got, there's a commercial grade 60 mil uh, roof membrane. It's a TPO, which is a thermoplastic. So it's a 60 mil, which is uh, the same product you're going to find on a hotel, an office building, a library, restaurant. So what we did is design the roof so it works and functions exactly like a commercial roof. If you get on a commercial roof or Google commercial roof images, you're going to see the air conditioners, the vents, you're going to see skylights, you're going to see all those things elevated up off the roof line. That's how a commercial roof functions. All the little things like plumbing and like we do have the ladder, those all go in boots. That's how you seal these up. If you don't do it that way, that's why they leak. Because they want you to keep slobbering that die core on there. Don't use that die core. Uh, we use a product called M1. It's a great product by Chemlink. Uh, it would be compatible if you had issues on your roof. You can use M1. If I had a tube, I'd show you if I could hunt one down. But um, the M1, you could go over it with the uh, in lieu of the die core. So do not use die core. There's no reason for a caulking to fail within three months. If it fails within three months, 
then that should tell you something right there. So what they do is they're exploiting people's ignorance to roof systems, and they're saying, hey, put some more on, more on, more on. The only one's putting more on is a moron. There's something wrong with that system. We just think about it. Would you go and get tires at any reputable place, and then the salesman comes out and says, hey, thanks for, your, for trading with us. We appreciate that. And, oh, by the way, fill those tires up with air every three or four months. You'd be like, what? What did you just say? Oh, yeah, they're going to go dead flat. I mean, obviously, you'd think there's something wrong with those tires. You don't go around your house and reseal your windows around your house every three or four months either. No one does that. That's the only product I know, and I've been doing this, let's see, about 35 years, I guess, 35 plus years, that I've been doing commercial roofs and commercial work, and I've never ever seen, in residential, but I've never seen a product that's designed to be exterior that fails in three months. So if you think about it, Dicor knows that. So why would they not say, hey, that thing's only lasting a few months. Why don't we bring that back to the lab and have it reformulated so it'll last longer? Because it's their cash cow. 12 bucks a tube every three months, 60, what, 60, 72 dollars maybe, that you may need four or five tubes on there. And, you know, it, it's a big cash cow for them. So that's why they don't do it. So what we do is all these here, all of the curbs and all of these things that we designed, these are all proprietary to us. We don't sell them. We, you know, we put the videos together so the owner can see what we put, uh, what, how we did their roof system. But like I said, all of this components, we don't sell any of this. So uh, just to give you an overview though, like I said, there's a commercial grade roof and I'll show you a sample of it. And it's a structured membrane. And I'll explain that to you in a second here. But uh, you can see how we got the boots. We got them all filled up all sealed so there's a plate on the bottom there and that plate goes to the roof and you screw it down once you screw it down inside there then we seal it up like that this is all real flexible that's never going to come apart you're never going to have a leak there this is the plumbing and all this is all heat welded you got all this heat welded all around here this plumbing right here if this cap come off maybe on another area because it'd be hard for a branch to come through all this but we'll say this pops up on any other one when it does see it's all sealed there too but if it come off all that water is just going to go down into the holding tank. You're not going to have a water leak. Where uh, on the traditional type of RV roofs, you just have a plastic piece that comes over that. And then once it cracks and fails, water can get inside. And that's usually where we find a lot of damage. So you're done with this system. It's And it's loaded. You see, loaded pretty much like the way this is. So that's how we do all the bell caps. And then again, you can just go replace that. Easy peasy. Uh, the air conditioners, we've got stands in the back. That just helps give it some balance. That's what we do. Elevates it up off the roof. We got that roof curb right there. And we have a counter flash on here. All that curb, everything is all heat welded right in there. All this is all heat welded all the way back in there. Not just that edge, the whole thing is. So there's a flange on there, and you can see the flange right there. So I got this other counter flash. That's a counter flash, but this is one for the air conditioning. And the reason why we put this one on because if you get caught in a storm in the rain obviously you got water coming across water tries to run up it's going to hit that flange and it's going to run out on the actual cover though it could trickle down and it could go back into that foam gasket i don't want that to happen so it'll force the water to come over come down below that counter flash on the curb and roll out on the sides the underside of the pan of the air conditioner is kind of corrugated so water is going to have a really hard time trying to trickle its way back there but the gasket is sealed anyway so that's just the way we do that um, if you don't know how to seal a gasket on there I would not recommend doing it because you have to use a certain product because if you use any off-the-shelf product you could actually have a, an adverse effect where the product you use would eat the foam <laughs> so we don't want to have that happen uh, and again, we got the, the stands right there, keeping balance. We got them on all of them. And then the same thing with our curves for our vent. All that's all heat welded. This little guy right here, that's solar. So he's anticipating on putting solar. So we've ran some wires, and then you take that cap off right there, just unscrew it, and the wires are right there so we can service it. He just hasn't done it yet. He's still trying to see where and what size he can get to fit on here proper. And then when he comes back, we'll probably end up m putting the mounts on there for him. But we did the same thing with the radio. See how that's in a boot? Everything's in a boot. I'll go around the other side. On the edge here, there's two layers. You've got two layers of caulking. This is actually glued, this termination bar, this metal, the gutter rail. 
that has caulking behind it. The caulking oozes out, we strike it down. So you may want to call that one strike. And then we go back and put one more strike over it, and then we put another strike over this. So really, if you want to say maybe there's three. But um, we've got all of this all sealed up. We actually went around the whole entire coach on this one because that's what the owner wanted. We went around the light, went around the windows, went around everything, all around, everywhere. Make sure this thing was sealed up tight. So the roof system... This is what a commercial grade roof system is like. You can barely see it on this one, but I'll show you on this other one because it shows up better. If you look at this, you can see all those little squares. That's a structured membrane. And there's part of the weave right here. That's part of the weave that's in there. So that's where it gets its strength. So it'll resist um, tree branches. It'll resist, you know, punctures in there. If you did get a puncture, we can do a hot patch on it, and it's no big deal. So again, we got the two strikes down there, and... Let's see where that went. Here it is right here. Oh, this is why we do two strikes. Now, I've got nothing really against Lexo. It's really clear. That's what this is. This is a tube of Lexo. But what's great about this demonstration is you can see all those air bubbles in there. So as you go along and you're, you're doing some caulking, you're going to inject one of those air bubbles up underneath there. So now as the coach is going down the road, racking, twisting, flexing, then there's a very good chance that you could have one of those little air bubbles just breach out and now you potentially have a leak. That's why we put those strikes on there. We do a di different insert trim. This is a different insert trim. This insert trim goes in and over this rail. And let me show you this here. So this is what they, the cheap ones they use. You can see right here. See how it's got that little fin? fits in the track but this is an awning rail but as it's sitting like that water can still get down inside that track right in there see and that's typically what we find we'll still find moisture and all sorts of stuff in there just debris dust dirt what we got is this this is a different type if you look at that groove it actually will go in that track and over the track so it seals out all the water so uh, you can't buy this in black. I have a, I have some, but I had to special order it because the RV industry is so cheap they won't do it. But uh, in order to get it, I had to buy two miles of this stuff. I mean, literally, I had to buy 10,000 linear feet in order to get just this. So I've got four or five years of this stuff. You can buy this in white, though. You can buy it in white, and it's called um, DX946-1W if you like that. Okay, and it comes in white, but you cannot get it in black. Uh, not unless you want to buy that. We don't sell any products at all. And again, these aren't DIY videos, but you may be getting some tips out of it. And, um, you know, maybe this, knowing this may help you out, knowing this insert trim, you know, just to keep that much more water out of it. But uh, that's about us over here on this big old Viper. A lot of work. We also did the floor. I'm probably going to have to jump inside there maybe a little later, but we redid the floor. It's all back together, so you really can't see anymore. We showed you all the other stuff that we did to the work. But now the padding's down, so it looks like it's supposed to look in there. Uh, except for, obviously, we had to slice the, the padding. But you can see how we did the radio, refrigerator. Again, all this is all heat welded. This whole thing is, and not just right here. So it's going to take a heck of a raindrop to try to breach all of this. And again, we got these, these are the same plumbing. So, if a, like I was saying, if a branch come and took this off, you could replace it. And then, um, you know, the same over here. These are the counter flashings that we make right here. So, if you got any water, I'm going to move more towards the front so you have that water just coming across. And as it comes across, it's going to hit up on here and it's going to get forced to come around this way. It can't go anywhere, it can't jump up. So, you're minimizing any erosion effect. So the way they do these now, when they put these right, the skylight lenses, they put them right down on the roof. Well, you've got UV rays that are beating up your caulking, and then you also have the erosion effect from all that water just rushing across it all the time. So this is going to stop all of that. Uh, then when they come in for inspections, if we notice anything that needs to be done, we'll be glad to do any touch-ups, you know, if we notice anything on uh, across here that needs to be re -caulked. But all of this has to be primed. So a lot of guys are always asking, hey, uh, you know how you put this on? You have to prime it. You have to put a primer. And you can, whatever roofing you're using, if you decide to trek this road yourself, you can buy the primer too and tell them you need TPO or PVC or EPDM. It's all a universal primer. 
and what it'll do is it closes the pores and it allows the product to stick if you don't this is so slick you put this on it, even though it being a good product it will not bond to this so you definitely need to have all of that primed um, we have a special bottle we use but you can faintly see see the primer right there so we have a special bottle that we can measure out the bead we want how much we're going to do because on this roof it wouldn't show up too much because that's kind of golden you know and jaundice but on a white roof you'd see that pretty good but um that's about us so you can see how the counter flashing is on this one on, on all of them and then what we did over here on the this uh wine guard this is an automatic antenna what we did is we designed some boots and those bolts go down into the boots and they're secured to the roof deck and then those bolts come up as you can see and then the, the foot to the antenna is mounted to it and then you get the coax in the back so we'll say you know again a tree branch knocks it off or if it just simply fails you can just come up here with a half inch wrench you can take those off one two three there's only three of them on there take those three off that coax off of there once you get all that off you can go into the store buy another one and mount it it would take you longer to go in the store purchase it <laughs> And walk out than it would be to remount another one so now you get another one come out here drop it on and then put your coax back on and you can go back camping or whatever you're doing so that's our viper right here and uh, if you have any questions you can give us a call 423-475-ROOF that would be 7663 and uh, this comes with a 20 year there's a 20 year roof system that's what this is it's commercial grade so the um, that's that's about it that's about it all summed up and uh, we appreciate you watching share the videos and uh, and again like i said we don't sell anything these aren't diy videos they're you know i would hate for someone to try to follow what we're doing and to not come out right and then there's a well, i saw it on the video there's a lot of stuff that we cannot show every single step of the way uh maybe if you want to call it behind the scenes type stuff but you know so for that reason that's why i say they're not diys there's a lot of work that we've got to do to them and depending on the coach uh, there's all different stuff that we have to do to prep it so but uh, again like I said we appreciate you watching and hopefully I've got all this stuff squared away and uh, I told you about the insert trim and about the roof system and whatnot but you can always do a comment on the YouTube here while you're watching this and I do pretty good with answering those pretty quickly if you have any questions thanks